Hey, everybody. Welcome to Social Society's Guest Interview of the Month. I am so excited for our guest and for you guys to meet her. Um, well, I'm going to get into all about how we know each other, how we got connected, but I'm going to pass it over to her, let her introduce herself, and then you're get, basically going to get to see a little coffee chat, although it's not coffee. It looks like she's got something else in her cup and I've got some, something in mine. So go ahead, introduce yourself, and then we'll get rolling. Hello, I am Anissa Pfeiffer. I am a entrepreneur. I invented this fun whiskey straw with straw with a whisk on it. Um, I'm a mom of three um, children, and then I have like a whole farm. <laughs> so, so, so my extended children have four legs and hair <laughs> um, from anything from horses to miniature cows to chickens, dogs, we've got it all. Um, and we live in Western Kansas and I married my sweetheart, my, my high school sweetheart, and he's been letting me do my thing ever since. <laughs> so awesome. You've got, you're like me in the sense of like, you have all these different hats you wear in life and in your business. And I just, it's so awesome. Okay, guys. So this is how we met. This is the power of social media. Okay. So if you heard my training last month, for those of you that are here in the in the group, we talked about why it's important to be social on social, right? And that's kind of been, when I go and I do interviews or podcast guesting on other people's shows, I talk about that. Like we, we need to be using social media as a social networking tool, not a social stalking tool like most people <laughs> use that, right? So um, we actually met each other via social media years and years and years ago. We've got mutual friends um, and I'm from Kansas City, originally from Wichita, but so there's no, like we've never met in person. This is the coolest thing, okay? Like we've never met in person, but for me anyways, I feel like we're friends. Like we just, there's so much about our lives and the things that are important to us. Um, I really would love to have a little farm like what you have. I have a little Greek yogurt bowl of dirt and some type of seeds growing on my patio. And that is all the vegetation that I am capable of creating. And I don't have animals, but I have three children and a fourth on the way. But your little life out there in Western Kansas, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love all of that. Can I do that in Kansas City? So there's so much about us and 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 what's been connected um, over the years, and and I'm really excited to get into your journey as an entrepreneur, obviously, specifically with Whiskey Straw. Um, and guys, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pick apart different aspects of her story. This is not pre planned. I basically gave her no script, no <laughs> questions, like this. no preparation. Let's Not, go. Nothing. <laughs> I even sent her two links to this meeting in our calendar invite that I think she clicked the right one anyways, but I realized there was a Google meet and a zoom link in the same calendar invite. And so this is really professional. Okay. And um, we're really doing it, but how about how about you, you just start with your entrepreneurial journey as a whole, bring us to how Whiskey Straw came about. And that's important with your story because Whiskey Straw wasn't the start. You've done other things. You're continuing to do other things, right? So let's talk about that journey and then we'll kind of get into Whiskey Straw. So I am 30 now. So my, my, actually my journey started when I was 21. Um, and my sister and I opened up a boutique together um, in, in the town that I'm in my hometown now, Hill City. And our, we have, I think, roughly 2,400 people that might be, that might be give or take a hundred, <laughs> you know, we've got one stoplight, we've got a grocery <laughs> store, the closest Walmart is an hour away. Um, you know, we, there's no we're, we're literally very rural Kansas. And, um, so I just, I've always had a passion for, for clothes. I love, you know, I love clothes. I love helping people. Like, I feel like growing up, everybody was like all my friends, my sister, especially, um, we were always like, it, everybody was always like, Anissa, what should I wear? And I'm like, yes, yes, absolutely not. 
you know, <laughs> so <laughs> I was like kind of like styling my friends or like they were shopping my closet or, um, so that's kind of where my love of, of clothes kind of started and fashion. And, um, and I just, I really loved helping other people feel beautiful. Like I feel like when you wear something, there's something about like, you know, when you've got that outfit that feels good, that looks good, you know, you walk a certain way you walk, you walk higher, your head is held high, you know, like there's this, like, I'm kind of untouchable in this moment, not in a conceited way, but in a, like, you know, you're confident in yourself and that's a good feeling. And I, and I, I really had a passion for helping people. And I think that that's also where I, where I get my, my love of, of women and like, you know, building women up and that I don't really, I don't like to say women, um, I don't really like women's empowerment, but I, I like, cause it's, it's more than that. You know, it's, it's more than just empowering women. It's more than just that, you know, empowering you. It's, it's, it goes deeper. It's so much deeper than, than just empowering. It's encouraging. It's, I think you have to encourage somebody before you can empower them to be who they, who they should be and who they could be. Um, and so that's where our journey started. And we, we know we we were in a really small town and a boutique. And at the time, um, I had a one-year-old. And through the course of several years, we had moved locations. We had gone to, we went to Hayes and opened up several locations. And just during that time, we really struggled. Like, you know, we really struggled with, that was also a big time in the retail world where you were either, you were either, drowning or you were one of the very few that were surviving Mm -hmm. and I felt like for so long we were just trying to not drown and finally you know several years later I was like I can't do this anymore like this is just it's too hard it's financially draining like I'm like I have nothing left you know to give and at that and at that point we were like it was okay like we were okay with just taking a break Mm -hmm. and we loved what we did we loved why we were doing it, you know, we, a big part of why we wanted to be in business is a, I love my sister and I wanted my sister to be successful. I wanted us to be successful. And we wanted to, you know, that we also kind of started growing in our faith and our journey and, um, and our walk with, with God too. And, you know, we were just like, you know, this is our, we just, we have to take a step back. And I really just felt like a failure. Like I really was like, okay, I spent, you know, so much of our savings, you know, trying to make this dream something. And I, I didn't even, you know, I, I got nothing in return. I got nothing in return. And so it was just, it was really hard. And I was like, I I have to walk away from this. Like, maybe this is just not for me. Maybe being an entrepreneur is just not for me. And we, we, we then moved back to Hill city because in the, in the process, we had moved to Hayes and we are moving back to Hill city, which is about an hour. And, um, we moved back are on our farm. It's kind of like, we're like starting fresh. We're like, you know, we've got three kids now. <laughs> so we went from like one to three <laughs> in this, in this time span. And I was like, I just, we just wanted to build, you know, part of it is, is you, you work towards these goals. You work towards these this building these businesses that we start as an entrepreneur and because you want to be able to provide this life that you you want that you envision um and like you're you know you're doing it for yourself you're doing it for your family you're doing it for you know like there's there's a vision there's a goal there's a dream there and um we moved back to the farm we're like okay well you know I'll just focus on focus on the farm and throw it and then throw COVID into the mix. (laughs) And I was just like, you know what? At that point, I, you know, we were like, okay, let's start it back up. We're going to start back up the boutique. It had been like a year of us kind of being silent and we're like, we'll just do online. We'll just try it. And we'll just kind of, I was like, I feel like I can't do nothing. Like I can't, (laughs) I'm not, I'm not good at it. Like I have an entrepreneur spirit and the fact that I just can't do nothing. Like I'm always like, oh, you know what? I've got 59 jobs right now. What is one more that I can come up with? Like, I, I just, I can't. Uh I, um, 
was just, you know, I'd, I'd really been praying during that time. And I was like, you know what, I, this is just, you know, I can't, I can't go back and fail the same way I did before. Like it will financially be like our ruin. Like I, I can't do it. I was very hesitant. I was very scared. Um, and little did I know that fear that I had that I thought was like going to be the, like, you know, that fear that I felt like was just monumental. Then I start the whiskey straw and that fear feels like a pebble, you know, compared to like, you know, compared to like what I face now or what I faced in this journey. And it's, yeah. it's funny how you go through different seasons where now looking back, I'm like, huh, that was not that, that I'll take that, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, but we, we just were like, okay, I was like, you know, praying about it. And I was like, this is just maybe not for me. Like, I just, I'm not, you know, I'm not cut out for it. I don't like, I don't want to fail. Like, I don't want to fail anymore. And not that, you know, I think we think things as failures when it's really they're you know, they're, they are lessons, but it's like, when you have to stop doing something, because maybe it's just not the right time. I feel, and we put so much time and money and effort into it, that failure feels much bigger, much, or that lesson feels harder, you know, like we, it's a harder kind of thing that to get over. And, um, so we, we start dabbling in it. I'm just like, okay, if this is what I'm supposed to do, well, like we'll get it rolling. And then COVID starts and we're like, okay, no, like, you know, how, how are we supposed to do this? So it's kind of like, okay, we get to put back on the back burner. I was like, okay, well, that's my sign. I'm not supposed to be an entrepreneur. Like, that's fine. I'll just, you know, I will just, we're moving on. And I was like, you know what? I like, that's the last straw. Like literally I remember praying and just thinking, like talking to, like talking to God and just being like, okay, you know what? This is like the last straw. Like I can't, I can't do this. And like, I'm maybe, you know, I just kept playing over that. Like it, maybe it's just not for me. And I just remember thinking, this is the last straw. Like I, I can't do this anymore. And it wasn't, but a few weeks later that I'm driving to Hayes to pick up air or like to pick up necessities, toilet paper. Cause you had to drive five hours to get toilet paper at that time. I feel yeah. like you had to really like search for it. And we had, I had to go get it. And I went to Hayes, had a smoothie. Cause at that time you didn't know what was open, what was closed, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. And between running errands and the drive there, my smoothie had like separated out and like, wow. it was like different, like layers. <laughs> and I like, couldn't get it to mix back up. It's always like, what is this now? Like, is I, this, is this actually a smoothie or like what's in my smoothie? This is weird. I, why does this not look anything like? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so I'm like trying to like mix it with my straw. It's not mixing. It's just like swirling everything around at the bottom. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, thanks. I'm like, I just, I'm getting coffee and I'm going home. So I go to Starbucks. I order a caramel macchiato, which mm, my heart Starbucks people will come at me, but it's fine. So, cause that's not how you're supposed to drink it and yada, yada, yada. We'll get into that later. But, um, so I ordered. I'm yeah, I'm with you on that. We'll go, we'll, we'll, we're going to address it here. Okay. So we can, this is all important information to be so important. Yes. <laughs> so I go and get a coffee. I like get ready to head home and I'm like trying to mix it with my straw. Well, I'm like swirling it around, you know, like with my straw in my cup, trying to swirl it. The lid pops off. Like it's like all over my car. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just want my drink to mix with my straw. Like it just needs a whisk on it so it can actually mix. And I lit, I literally was like in the same breath was like, oh, is there a straw with a whisk on it? No, no, there's not. And so I was like, oh my gosh, did I just come up with something? Like, did I just invent something? And so I literally like we got home or I got home and went to my grandma's, which we spend a lot of our, a lot of my time, a lot of our time at my grandma's house. And I'm like looking it up, but like, I was, I was also like scared to like look it up because I was like, is Google going to like create it? <laughs> my idea, you know? I, oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so I, and I waited to tell my husband, which it had been like two or three hours since I've like had gotten home. And I was like, I have to tell him, like, have some <laughs> yeah. And so he gets there we're eating supper and I look at him and I'm like, he was like, why are you acting like so like weird? Like, what is going on with you? And I'm like, 
I have an idea. And he's like, uh, you know, like that look that your husband gives you. That's like, I have heard <laughs> yes. this before. Like, yeah. what do I have to build? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what do I have to put up? And I was like, I was like, what if there was a straw with a whisk on it? And he was like, what? And I was like, yes. Like I told, I was like, I spilled my drink and he's like trying to mix it in the car this morning. And he was like, you, or this afternoon. And he's like, you always do that. Like you always spill it, like trying to like swirl your cup. And he was like, you, you're always doing that. And I was like, I know, but what if like there was a whisk on the bottom of the straw to like help you mix your drink? And he was like, that's actually pretty genius. I was like, I know, I know. But I was like, I, and so I was like, I've looked it up. I don't think there's anything like it. And he, he was like, okay, well, and he even said to, he was like, well, look it up, but don't like give that. He's like, don't give the internet too much. Right. Information. <laughs> and so then literally I talked to a friend that like, uh, that does manufacturing and literally, and I, he was like, well, can you get a prototype made? And, and I was talking to Marcus, like, this is all happening, you know, like within, 20 minutes wow. of me like being like telling Marcus me immediately like contacting a friend that was I was like hey I have an idea like I think I think this like I think I just came up with something crazy cool <laughs> and so we jotted like we, I like scribbled it on the back of a uh, an envelope on my grandma's table um a bill <laughs> envelope and I like I was like it's gonna look like this and my husband goes He's like, Anissa, I can, I can make that. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh, duh. Like of all of the things, of all of the projects that you can't do, but I somehow think that you're like a woodworker or a car, you know, like a carpenter or like you could build my house or whatever, like all these little other projects that he has to like figure out how to do the one that I was like, oh, he can't do that. He's like, I can do that. So he, because he's a welder, so a little and, and so he was like, he's like, yeah, I can, I can make that. So with it, like the next day I went back to Hayes, I bought all of the straws I could find, like all the metal straws I can find, all of the whisks I could find, like I bought it all. And so, and I brought it back and he started he didn't, like literally within the initial idea to like him making me my first whiskey straw, it was like not even 24 hours later. Wow. And so I was, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was fun. It was crazy. Like the beginning, it, it's so fun to see, you know, I feel like I've always had that, like, I have an idea. I have an, like, I feel like that's, I should be trademarked. Like I have an idea. <laughs> and so it was, it was really, really cool to see something that was so, that I thought was like unique to me, like original to me become an idea to a dream like literally I went from this is it like this is the last straw I can't do this anymore to literally to literally creating what I call the last straw yeah <laughs> and so and it's funny how it's funny how like God had worked in that moment too to say you know literally using my play on words <laughs> of yeah. me telling him like this is the last straw like I you know I I'm not meant to be an entrepreneur and he was like you know what you're not just going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to, I'm going to raise that and you're going to be an inventor. Wow. And it has been a journey <laughs> ever since. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Oh my gosh. There's so much about that journey and, and you're in, you're in the second part of that now, right? Yeah. Like, um, I have a whiskey straw just so everyone knows <laughs> I'm not going to have someone on this show and not have their product. So I use it for my powdered drinks the most, just so you guys know, this is coconut powdered water and it sinks to the bottom every single time. So that's one of the things. And then I use it for all of my coffee drinks because okay. this is me. Caramel macchiatos taste freaking the best when they're shaken, okay? Stirred, but right. like they really need to be mixed because you can't just swirl the cup and I will make sure everyone has a link to this reel that you made. That is my favorite reel where she's got her drink and she's like swirling it. And you have these glamorous glasses on, I'm pretty sure <laughs> in the car. And she's like trying to like <laughs> the drink and sip it 
and not spill it all over herself. And I'm like, I've done that. <laughs> like yes. literally, I'm like, I have done this. And and I've even ordered the drink up. Can you just make it upside down? And can you yeah, like people it? all the time are like, just order it this way and you don't need that straw. I'm like, you're missing the whole point. Like, this isn't just the only, you know, like this, this is a my drink of choice. And it never tastes, it never tastes the same whenever they make mix it themselves. Okay. Oh. I where it never tastes the same agreement. Like, and and so many of their drinks still are like that I'm like first of all okay of course it looks beautiful when you get it but nobody wants to drink that much espresso and then milk like no that's not a thing okay I want it all mix I want to I want to enjoy the whole thing <laughs> it's a whole thing and I want to enjoy it the way I want to enjoy it yeah and people if I, will come yeah. after you they will. They will. And they're, they're, we'll, we'll get to them. Um, but you know, what if you, what if you order it with caramel drizzle on the side and on the bottom too, you got to get something strong. And unfortunately the quality of straws that they're using in the stores these days, the caramel drizzle is going to win that battle. So you need something strong. Um, so it's awesome. And I love that God said, Oh no, you're going to be an inventor. And I believe that, you know, it's like, and this is something else. There's a book. Is it up there? <laughs> no, it's downstairs. There's a book I love by Bishop T.D. Jakes and it's called Soar. Oh, yes. Oh, or there's also another book before that, Crushing. And he just, in the world of business and entrepreneurship and in T.D. Jakes' own story, he talks about there was the thing that led to the thing, Right. And I think it's in, he did an interview with Stephen Furtick a couple of years ago in promotion for SOAR. And he was just talking about like the, the first chair that was ever made, right? Like God gave that person the, idea of the chair to somebody, but God gave him the tree, right? right? Like, and, and that's just, it's, it's so cool. What's, what's really important about your journey is that bridge between boutique owner to inventor, right? And those thoughts that can come in that begin to infiltrate and begin to take root if we allow them to, right. the seeds of doubt, right? And the things that can come in and say, maybe I'm not cut out for this or like maybe I'm show me a sign or whatever. <laughs> and then to have those, those, those things kind of valid the ice cream man is driving by my house right now. So if you guys hear that, I'm distracted. So um, I literally saw your eyes like, oh, yeah, sorry. I'm also listening for feet downstairs. Yeah, that are going to be like, mom, money, money. It's the first time the ice cream man has come through the freaking neighborhood. Um, and if you live in the in the country, the ice cream man does not come to your house. You become the ice cream man. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You need to get yourself a little cart out there. And I know. I feel like this is the only time you get ice cream and the cart comes out. If right. not, my like three-year-old literally every morning, it's like summer and summer means that he has a popsicle like every day, every hour. I'm like, buddy, we got to tone it down. I'm That's like, so we're on day three of the summer. Like we need to not. Yes. But, oh, yeah. sorry, squirrel guys, that happens with me sometimes. Um, but just the, those, the, that's where that's, that's the first time that in your story that you've explained to me, um, and here that I can point out where like, that's a breaking point for a lot of business owners, right? We're not even talking about social media yet, but, but social media, and this is where I want to start to dive into like, okay you've created the whiskey straw. Let's, let's get real quick to where you are today. But then I want to spend some time in that in-between creation to where you are today, because social media, you have those thoughts yourselves, those, those doubts, those fears, right. those, am I cut out for this? And you begin to like, look for validation, confirmation of like, should I keep going? Should I not? <clears throat> well, gosh, then you get into social media world and then you have people on social media who are validating the doubts that you're having about yourself and you're still having to like oh am i am i supposed to yeah. am i actually supposed to do this because that's where a lot of times and sometimes it's even family we'll talk about that as family or friends can be some of our worst critics right it's like that's oftentimes where i see 
I'm as a social media coach, like I see people quit on their dream because of the world of social media and what it takes to actually build your brand online. So tell us from invention to where you're at today, real quick in that journey, like where you're at. Okay. But I want you to talk about those struggles where you started to get some backlash or just started to get a lot of negative commentary as you're beginning to do what you know to do on social media, which is you got to create content to build right. awareness, right? So give us that. So, so we, you know, we created it and the, and it's funny because I think back on it and that was like, you know, when from the, um, from the initial idea, um, or creation of whiskey straw was 2020 and it's now what 2020 it's now 2023 excuse me and it's been three years you know it's been three years and people automatically think that all three years have been like I've had you know like sales all three years and it's really like I didn't actually get product until June of 2021. I didn't actually have sales until 2022. Like, you know, cause it 2021, like the end of that was really like family, friends, nobody knew about it. Nobody's really like looking, like looking into it, you know, like nobody's searching whiskey straw cause nobody knows that they need to look for whiskey straw. You know, there is no, there has been no, you know, besides close family and friends. And so as I start diving into social media, cause you know, like, that's what everybody's saying. And that was the other thing that was hard was people started, we started to have more trade shows, which I did. And they were so, so, I mean, like they, they never, you know, you're, you're, you're hoping to get in front of the right crowd or the hope, hope that you get, you know, in, in front of the right person that is going to put your product, you know, in a bunch of stores or whatever. And <clears throat> so started doing real or I started doing reels and I was like oh and I had a two-year-old at the time like at the time and it was like trying to make a video would take six hours <laughs> I, I like I laugh because I'm like it would it took me so long like I remember my husband being like how how to go today and I'm like I made one five second video that took me six hours I'm going to bed <laughs> I, this is not, I cannot do this. Like, I was like, this is crazy. And I just, you know, I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll just keep doing it. Like, I'll just keep doing it and just see what happens. Well, literally one, you know, it's like a random day, you know, you're not, you, you think that like, oh, this is going to be the one, or like, this is like, this is going to be the catchy one that people like you know, it, that goes viral. And it was so, and I was told so often, and I, and I really remember this because I think this is something I need to really hold in, in my heart, you know, for the duration of this dream, you know, that is whiskey straw. And so many people would tell me, you just need to go viral. And I remember thinking, no, I don't want to just go viral. Like, I don't want to just be, I don't want to just go viral because then it's done. You know, like, I'm like, what I see this being and what I want it to be is so much bigger than a five second to fame type of, I don't want it to just go viral. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then it's funny because, you know, cause then you're, you know, everybody has this, you have this thought that like, if it just goes viral, this is what's going to happen. Like, if it just goes viral, I'm going to sell out, you know, like if it just goes viral, then you know, you have this, like, you start to have these like preconceived thoughts of like, what would happen if it just goes viral? Because, you know, you're spending, I mean, it was months, months and months that had, had gone by and my viewership, you know, like the people, like my views and things I, that were, that people were seeing was very slim, you know, like there just, there wasn't that, you know, it, it was not reaching a mass audience by any means. And randomly as God would have it <laughs> it goes viral and my first one my first instance and some others have gone viral as well and they're the very first one I think I think it uh, it kind of topped like eight million I haven't like ever gone back to look um but 
it it was at it kind of it just hung around like eight million people had had seen it or it had gone and um so that was like the first one and it was it was like exhilarating and it was exciting and then it was like you know you get you get some sales you oh I got I got sales from it I I would never say that I sold out of what I I have not actually I have not sold out of what I initially got in my very first order and I like would get disheartened because I'm like, if 8 million people saw this, why? Like, you know, I would like break it down. I'm like, I didn't even sell 1% of like, you know, I couldn't even sell 1%. Like maybe, maybe this is just not it. Like maybe this is just not, you know, you start to have those like doubt comes in so many different forms. Like it comes, it's, it's not just, you know, it's like, and then, and then you'd have, um, and that one really was the, wasn't the one that really made me doubt my, like my dream. And, you know, I was just, I was just happy that people saw it at that point. Like I was just excited and that was all on Instagram. Well, then I, cause, and it's funny because you just, you, it was just some silly, you know, some, there are always like silly ones that like, I kind of just made it in like a bunch of them that I had made one afternoon. And it was like three weeks later, it had gone viral. And it was just some short four second clip. And um, so then I was like, okay, maybe I need to focus on TikTok. And everybody was like, you need to do, you know, all of the, everybody who doesn't have an, who doesn't have a product or is an entrepreneur, most of them, most of them are like, these are all the things you need to do. And I'm like, I am trying, <laughs> you know, like I'm one person, I'm one person. And you want me to be a team of people? Like I already am. I am all the things. Yep. And so I started trying to focus on, on TikTok too. And I was just like, I don't know. I just always kind of had this like chip on my shoulder when it came to TikTok, like not because I, I don't know. I just feel like it was always very negative. Like, t- like I always just felt like what I saw or what I heard about TikTok. And I know that there are people that have been very successful on TikTok. It just, it didn't have that initial vibe for me, even, even before, like, I had a product and was, you know, trying to bring it to, to TikTok. Well, I had posted a video, let it be. I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, I'll just check and see. It had been, I don't know, a few weeks and I got on it or maybe a few days. I don't really know. And I get on and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many, there's so many likes. Like what is going on? And I was like, is something going viral on TikTok? And I was like, I like got like so excited. I was like, this is so cool. Like, cause it, it, it is so cool to like, you know, have immediately have, know that you're, you're reaching people when before you know that you, you weren't. Yeah. And I get on and it was like crushing. <laughs> it was so crushing. It was like, and it was funny because more people were mad. Cause I, I was like, this is why I invented the whiskey straw. And I was like going to make a drink. Well, the drink took longer than 60 seconds. And so as I'm like trying to explain like the drink, so then I could mix it. I literally, I think I only got like, well, a cut off the end of my video, which I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I got more hate for that than I did any, like people were stitching the TikTok to like theirs, like giving like ex- explanations in there. Like they were all hateful, like all of them. And there was like hundreds of thousands of them, like hundreds of thousands of comments, people like, it was, it was like, you're dumb. Stop looking at the camera. Like you're just, you just want to look pretty. It was. And then like, I hope you go bankrupt. Uh-huh. Like these, all of the things that like people were saying. And I was like, what? And I, I just was like, you know, it, it found that little seed of doubt that hadn't quite, you know, that hadn't caught, quite gone away, just buried enough that I, it wasn't bothering me, but it gave, it found its way to, to make something grow. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I, I, and it was funny because there was even like, Cause it was one of the, my friend had like a herbal life tea store and I had gotten some from her, you know, trying to support her and people were like, oh, you're just an MLM, you know, that, that says all I need to know about you and things like that. And I was just like, 
I, it was just, I was literally mind boggled. Like I like, couldn't even wrap my mind around, like, I don't know, like there was just, and then like, some people were like the amount of times people have told me though, I hope you can't wait either. I can't wait for you to go bankrupt or I hope you go bankrupt is wild to me. Like I would never, I, I mean, you know, obviously there's things that you would say that are people say that you would never say. And I would, I just legitimately like, why would you ever say that to someone? Yeah. You know, I've got a family I'm trying to, you know, it's just, it's just, it's crazy to me. And so it found that seed of doubt and really like helped it to, to grow into something a little bit bigger than, than just like, and I was like this, maybe this isn't for me. Like, maybe this isn't, maybe, maybe, maybe I was wrong, you know, maybe I was wrong. And is there a way out? Like, can I get, you know, can I find my way out of this? Like, I'll just, you know, finish off my, my product loan and I'll just be done. Like, you know, like I, and I, and I really started to like, like doubt that. And it was so hard because it not only like diminished my dream, it diminished what God had given me. Yeah. And it had also diminished my power to see through that he was going to be there, you know, and that he was like walking with me through that. And there, I mean, you know, I, I like, it really wasn't. And then there had been, you know, some other reels that had then gone viral on, on Instagram and shortly after that, and they were all for the majority good, like positive. There's still negative negativity, um, that I get, you know, as with everything, I think on Instagram, there's, you're always going to have negative, but it wasn't as, it wasn't as deep as like TikTok. Like I think it felt personal, you know, like these are people that I that do not know me that don't know the whiskey straw that literally took a 60 second video and tore me apart. Mm. And it just, it was, it was hard. Like it, it was hard because what doubt will do is kill something so fast. Yeah. It will kill, it will kill even the smallest, you know, hope chance yep. of that. And, and it takes a lot to get that back. Yeah. It's a lot to get that back. And so, you know, fast forward, I was kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to lay low for a while. And I had started like opening up. Cause I was like, you know what? It kind of like, you know, God, like reminded me, it was like, you know, it's never going to be easy. You know, like not, not everybody is going to, not everybody's going to like it and not everybody's going to like, like what you're doing or like what I'm calling you to. And that's okay. And I, and I really like, I was like, okay. And then, you know, a lot of my family was like, you just need to brush that off. And I'm like, you know how hard it is when you get on and you know that there are literally 500 comments and they're all telling you how stupid you are or how dumb you are or how you're not special. I'm like, it's, it's hard to just brush that off because you don't know these people, you know, but they made a point to let you know what they thought. And I, I think it was really, a, it was like a pivotal moment where I was like, either I completely walked away from it because I thought that what your opinion mattered more than, more than what my actual calling was and, or I'm going to keep going. And it took me a minute, but I kept going. And, and, and it's so easy to live in that place where you now have this like huge platform. And I, there was times during that, like, you know, that short few weeks where I was like, wow, I can't imagine being somebody that is act, you know, that has, cause at the time I didn't have, I don't have that. I didn't have that many followers. I think I had 200 on, on Instagram and, or 200, you know, like 2000 on Instagram and five on TikTok. Like I didn't really have that many, you know? And and it, it it went back to that, like everybody saying, you just need to go viral. And it was like, yeah, I went viral, but in the worst way, you know, like, it's not just about going viral. And, um, when I started sharing more about like, this is what you're you know, like, you're going to face this, but it's going to be okay. Like you're going to face this. You're going to, and, and, you know, not everybody's going to get the same, but we're going to face that same, that same seed of doubt. Yeah. We're all going to face it and we're either going to bury it or we're going to let it grow and we're not and and then we'll never become who we're supposed to become mm. or we'll never see what we're supposed to see because we let doubt stand in the way. Yeah. 
And so, and then shortly after that, um, some other, I had some other things to kind of catch steam on Instagram and it was, you know, I, I've, I've learned to, cause I, and people were like, you just need to comment back, you know, like friends and family, they'd be like, you just need to comment back. I'm like, I don't have time for that. Like, I don't have time. There are certain things where I'm like, you know, I don't really like that. So I'll, I'll, but I don't, it's way too easy to get caught up in arguing with every, you know, I could have spent two weeks commenting back to everybody. And some people just like to argue. And I'm like, I'm not wasting my time. I'm, I'm now taking away from my vision to argue with you when you don't see it. And that's not, that's, I'm not spending my time well arguing with you when my, when my direction, like my vision is this way, I'm going this way. And you're causing me to look off in the distance and, and I'm getting sidetracked, you know? So I've learned that not everything is worth a response. Yep. Not everything is worth a response and not everything is worth your time and a response. Mm, It's a huge lesson. Yeah. And, and it was like, I, it was funny because it's like, I always knew that that was going to happen. Like I always, you know, you, people say, you know, like you're going to get backlash and everybody's gonna, you know, you're gonna, not everybody's going to like it. You know, not everybody likes Nike. Not everybody likes, you know, like there's, there's a lot of things that not everybody likes, you know, and when they first start up and there's a lot of, um, my husband, he's so against pickles, you know, it's like, he's got it out for pickles and cats. It's like, everyone has their thing, right? Not everyone's going to be for what you yeah. bring to the table, right? They're just not. And you think, I think about like, cause I watched, you know, Shark Tank a lot before this and you think about like the things that like, like the ring camera, you know, like they told them no. And they were like, this is dumb. Nobody's ever going to use this. Like, this is a waste of money. And t- how tables have turned where Amazon then bought it and, you know, they're, they kept going. And if they would have stopped because of that, you know, like they never would have had that opportunity. And so, and that like, that's, that's the story with so many entrepreneurs, you know, that entrepreneurs ring light is sitting in my office right now. Literally, I'm using that ring light. I'm look at this. Look. I'm yeah. using- it's like, it's see, and it's like all of those things are, yep. Like, you know, you have the chance to, and it, and it's funny because all of those moments, which, and it's, and it's also people think that it's, you know, it's just one time, you know, like you have that seed of doubt one time, like it's something that you kind of have to, you, you learn to navigate, you know, because we have good days. We have bad days. There's days where I'm like, wow, I've sold nothing. Like art, like, you know, you, you start to, and you really have to remember and like staying grounded with your calling is, is important. And knowing like God did not bring me to this to, you know, just to let social media rip me apart. You know, like that's, he, you know, he's going to give me strength through this. Absolutely. he's going to see me through it. And I, like, I, there's so many times where I'm like, you know, you don't, even in, in business, you don't feel like there are certain aspects of this that I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. I, some, there's still times where I'm like, I am under qualified for this. <laughs> like I, and, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, you did not, you do not call the qualified, you qualify the called. And I'm like, I just have to like live in that sometimes because there are so often where I'm like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing? I'm like, I, I know the end goal and I'm, and I'm just trying to figure out my footing underneath it. Yeah. You made me think of Romans 8, 28, which says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And you talked about that, right? You talked about being called and it's like, you had a lot that went really bad. Right. Not because you were doing the bad. It was just people are bad, you know, like, and that spreads more like negative. I've, it really made you, it really made me think about all the times, you know, where really, truly how, how good news travels and how negativity spreads. Yeah. There is a, there is a total difference, total difference. And it's a total different pace. And this is the way that I I've seen it. Um, negativity is like an atom bomb. 
And when it hits, it hits and it's all at once. And especially when it comes to feedback, right? So let's just use that positivity and, and positive responses, positive feedback is on a J curve. It's exponential growth. It is something that it does take time to build, right? There's going to come a point in the next year, in my opinion, to two years where your product sales will go viral and people will think it's an overnight thing, but they won't see 2020, 2021, 2022 and all the crap. They'll just see the boom and they'll think that's what happened. And you're like, no, you gotta know I was down here. And then it, but what keeps, this is what, and again, this is where a lot of times, especially in that exponential growth pattern, you could take that as far as revenue sales or whatever it is, people stop before the curve starts, right? They stop and it's doubt. It's, it's oftentimes negative feedback, whether it's from potential customers, social media, people, family, friends, like this is something that I think is important. And, and for you and I as believers, we know that our purpose ultimately is not to create a straw, is not to coach social media. It is the thing that will create influence for us to be used, right? That's our value system. That's, that's what we believe. But it's like, we can't even begin to operate in that or really be who we are called to be on this earth. If we stop, right. Have to keep going, which is something that you said, um, even with the reels, like when you were just five followers on, like you've said it a couple of different times. And even in your boutique business, like I just kept going. Yeah. And cause there's so many times where it's like, and here recently, cause it, it's, you know, I have, I had this, I didn't have, I had a dream that didn't work out, but it prepared me for the next dream, you know, and, and it prepared me for something that I was not prepared for at all. You know, I was ready to walk away from being an entrepreneur and God, you know, God was like, no, you've always had this inventor spirit. Like I remember growing up, I'd always be like, mom, what if we just, what if they just invented this? Or what if there was this? Like, I always had that kind of like, my mind is always working. And, and even now, like my husband, like, I'll be like, Ooh, what about this? And he's like, can we, can we focus on, on this for just like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I am, but, but I also have this other idea. Like I need you. <laughs> and so like, it's, it's like you said, you know, God, he will, he, 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 he gives you the thing that prepares you for the thing that creates the thing. And and like you said, we, it's not just about the straw, you know, and I try to be very, it's, I try to be very open about, about how, about how hard it is, because I don't want people to think, wow, like she just has it so easy because I feel like too often you can look on social media and you, or you can read somebody's blog and think, oh my gosh, you know, she's got a farm and she's got this invention and she's selling all this stuff and it must be just so easy. And it's like, no, I literally need God's strength every day to keep going because there are more days that I want to give up and be like, this is too hard. I'm not qualified for this. I don't know how to run this. Like, I don't know how to do this, you know? Yeah. There's, there's 59 things on my to-do list. And I know, I know how to do one, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I need your strength to get me through this. Or there's times where it's like, now it's, you know, I'm in a season of, I don't, I didn't, I'm not having as many sales as I did before. And it's hard to feel like, you know, you're finally going up and now you're like, okay, wait a second. Like let's pivot here. We've got to, I've got to figure out something to, something else. And you that, you know, that little voice of doubt in the back where then people start, you start seeing, noticing those comments that are like, like just recently, the other day, somebody said, um, if it would have popped off the way it was supposed to, she would have, you know, she would have sold out already. And I was like, ah, do not, do not let that live in your head. Do right. not let that live in your head. Do not let that live in, in doubt, you know, because yep. Those things are what cost, you know, people are like that saying like, this will live in your mind. Like I live, like, let this live in my mind rent free. Those things cost you more than like the, the most rent in your mind. Yeah. 
yeah. because they, they literally will make you go bankrupt with your ideas, with your hope, with your, with what you want to do and what you, and, and then what you can see, because when I think of whiskey straw, I'm like, it's going to be in every cup. It's going to be all over the world. I'm going to figure it out. And then the very next moment, I'm like, how do I sell it out of Kansas? You know, and I, but my mind is still like global and I have to, and then, and then you see those comments and people are like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And, you know, if she would have sold it the way it, it was intended or, or people that are like, why would I use that for a drink? Or your my straw can do the same thing. And, it, you know, it's just, it's like all this, like back and forth. And I, and you just have to cling to that, to that, like the promise, the yep. initial promise. Yeah nothing else but the initial promise and that is a god called you to it he will see you through it yep so this is so awesome the way that god works and uh so i was on a completely different coaching call last night with a girl on another business team that i have we were talking about doubt and um and we've talked about that a lot today so i'm going to share with you something that she shared her name's taylor i'm going to give her credit where it's due she's not even in this membership she's in my other business, but, um, it's so profound. And she, she, we were talking about it and this is how she prefaced it. She goes, hold on in regards to get to doubt. I'm getting a download here. And I'm like, Oh, okay, let's go. I know what this means. You know, she's getting a download and she's typing and it's like five minutes between that text. And when she sends the thing. So this is what it says. She said, what is the opposite of doubt? Belief, right? So when doubt creeps in and it inevitably will, what is our response to that doubt? So you sit and think about it, right? And you're like, doubt creeps in, what's your response? You guys, look back at Anissa's entire journey here. Anytime there was doubt, she, she processed it, of course, right? And like you said, there's been times when it's been there but there was almost always an action that you ended up taking that pushed past the doubt. There was, there was a response that you had that was aligned with your belief and what you knew to be true, right? So she says, we as people and we as business owners have to study ourselves and know what builds our beliefs. So for us, like a lot of times it's listening to podcasts or it's you know, reading certain books or as believers, spending time with the Lord, getting in the word, maybe, maybe even like making a sale in your business, right? That's going to build your belief. We, we, we like to coach on four pillars of belief, help someone get a sale, help somebody qualify a new business partner, help them get to um, a bigger environment with more people or help them um, hit a new bonus bracket, right? Like four pillars of belief, um, or have a conversation with a coach. That's something that you can do to build your belief. But there has to be things as business owners that we're doing to continue to build our belief. Because here's the thing, no one, not your husband, not your children, not your grandma, no one is in charge of your own belief except you, right? And where does that belief come from? And then she ends it and she says, I'm adding a lot. It was actually only a paragraph, but I'm adding. I'm her mentor. So I'm like adding to what she said. Right. <laughs> but, but she says, uh, we either believe the lies of the enemy or we believe what God has for us. I personally don't think that there's a middle ground. And I'm like, yes, this is so good. Yeah. The of doubt is belief. But where's that belief come from? It's like you've known, right? Like you're called to more. You were called to the world of entrepreneurship. It started one way and here you are now. You're an inventor. You've got all these things. I see for you as your peer and friend, like I see the journey that you've been on is not just for whiskey straw. The journey that you've been on is also, so maybe I'm prophetically explaining, like I'm, I'm giving you a word maybe, but I, I feel it. It's like, there's going to be other inventors. There's going to be other people who need your story because they have something too. And God's been able to take you through some really, really hard lessons. He loves you. He doesn't want you to suffer, but he's been able to walk through that with you, like you said, and give you the knowledge and understanding of how you got through that. 
both tactically, right? And spiritually. So you can guide other people too. Yeah. That's what all of our businesses have an opportunity to be. If we can have eyes to see and ears to hear on that. What are your thoughts? I want to cry. (laughs) (laughs) It's already, it's been like raining all day. So that's why my hair looks a mess. I'm like, my makeup looks okay, but no, it's probably not. But no, I think, I think you're right. And I know that God knows our heart, you know, God knows what's in our heart and God knows that for me, of course, I, of course, I love the whiskey straw. Of course I love, you know, of course I believe in it, but there's, there's always been something more in my heart than just being an entrepreneur. And he knows that. And and that is when it comes to building somebody up, there is nobody more like you want somebody to believe in you, you know, like you want somebody to believe in you and you want somebody to sit there and be like, you know what, don't give up for one more day, you know, because you give up today. And what if that door was just open enough for you to push through tomorrow mm-hmm. and you walk into a totally different room, a totally different life, a total, you know, like that's, you're just one more day away from, from what's next, yeah. you know, and don't give up. Like you're, you're right there. And I've, and there's been so many times, I think in my life where God has shown me, you know, don't give up, just give it one more day. And that one more day either gave me strength to keep going or it opened a new door, you know, and in my heart, I want to share that. I want to share the good, bad, the ugly and the beautiful, you know, because it's all in there. It's all in the story and we're all going to face it. We all face, we all have so many different things that we face, but they're also so similar. The heartbreak feels similar. You know, the, like the stories, even though they are so different are similar and it's funny how parallel they are. And I can tell somebody, you know, what I'm going through in these seasons of my life and it gives somebody the opportunity to feel renewed or have strength to keep going. And there's enough room, you know, there's enough room. God did not say there's only room for you to succeed and you to succeed, you know, and there's room for, for all of us. And that's really like, I think in my head, when you said that, like, I have had this, like, I feel like I'm, I'm just a dreamer, you know, like I've just got all of these like big dreams, but one thing that I really want to do or would love to do is to have like a women's conference that it's just, it's a renewing, you know, like it's a renewing of your, of, of your dreams. And yeah. to know that like, because the, the thing is, is the, all of these moments, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the hard, they're moments, yeah. you know, they're moments of time. And, and when we look back, even if, even if they're seasons, they seem so small. They seem so like in the, in the moment, it feels like it's taking forever, especially if it's hard. Yeah. And then we, we look back and we're like, wow, I got through that. And it, 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 I got through it and God got me through it. And there are, we are all going to face it. It's not something that's, you know, just subject to me or just subject to you as believers either. Right. Right. And that is just something that I'm like, how am in there? And I've had people tell me like, thank you for being like so open. Cause I, I, sometimes I struggle. I'm like, I don't want everybody to think it's just, it's always hard and that you're always want to give up, but these are like daily things that I have to be like, okay, no, I'm still working towards this. You know, I'm still working towards this higher goal. I'm still working towards this big dream. And, and it is, it is hard. Like it is hard to not let what's going on in the world, what's going on in my family, you know, what's going on in, um, you know, just, just so many things, like so many outside pieces and you really have to just fix. And I, I'm like, I've tried to be, and, and also, it's also a walk with God, you know, it's also, it's also me learning to grow in my relationship with God. Yeah. I know that's definitely grown. That's definitely, that has to grow, you know, that's, I've seen it. And I, again, this is the first time we've had an in-person conversation, but I've, I've been able to see that. And that's awesome too. 
Yeah. So good. Thank you. All of this is so amazing. Oh my gosh. We could really keep going, but we can't. I'm also 23 weeks pregnant and I have the bladder that is like decent right now. Um, but also just for time. So wow. Okay, here's how I want to here's how I want to try my best to to bring this um to a close. <laughs> before well, before I do that, just anything else on your heart that you want to share from your story, from anything that we've talked about that you feel like maybe got left um left open that you want to maybe put a close on yourself and then I'll I'll kind of wrap this up on my end sure um I think of all of the things like especially you do not have to fake it till you make it you don't have to do that I I have learned that that is some people like love that saying I think that it I think that it takes away from your goal I think it takes away from from who you're called to be in the dream that you're, that you're trying to, to chase because celebrate that dream and don't fake it till you make it. And it's okay. And there are people that are going to surround you and they're going to pray for you. And there's going to be strangers that you do not know that are going to lift you up. So you don't have to fake it till you make it. Do not have to do that. And God, God didn't ask you to do that either. He asked you to just walk with him, trust his plan for you, trust that he has a good plan for you because he does. And, and as long as you are aligning with him and what you're doing and who in trying to be everything that you're like, you do what you can do and God will do the rest and you don't have to fake it till you make it because you're going to make it. So, so don't fake it. So and good. celebrate it. Mm, I love that. Gosh, I love that. That's so good. I know you guys have been be- be- absolutely blessed. Um, so this has been so amazing. Um, my teaching mind is is in full mode right now. There's notes I took as you were telling your whole story. So I'm gonna we're gonna end it on a couple of very practical social media marketing things that I just picked up on that you've done and, and add anything to this that you know that you've done with your social media um, from a tactical standpoint. So with Whiskey Straw specifically, you recognized, this is so great. This is so great. Like you're the ultimate excuse remover to me from like a business owner standpoint, because you had to create it's like Steve Jobs when he said people like they don't know what they want until you tell them that like that's how he created Apple basically the iPhone everything iPod shuffles anybody okay like you didn't know you wanted it until you knew you wanted it because they created this vision you had to do that with whiskey straw you literally had to cut you couldn't be a social media marketing coach that can lean on what other social media marketing coaches are doing to grow their business. You couldn't be a boutique owner studying boutique owners in small towns of Missouri while you're a small town, Kansas to learn what they're doing. You didn't have that. You literally had to start from nothing and you had to create your own content for something that no one knew anything about. Okay. Like you couldn't even go to chat GPT right now to create your own, con- like you couldn't, you couldn't, because it would be like, or it would have been at the time. It would have been like, what? Yeah. <laughs> whiskey. Are we drinking whiskey? That's what chat GPT would have said. Are we drinking whiskey out of a straw? Right. Cause that's cool. Okay. So, um, so that was one thing that I noticed was is from the, literally you had, you were ground zero. Most people think that they're at ground zero when they start their business. But if there is another business out there that's doing what you're doing, you're not ground zero. Yeah. So learn that like everyone in this group, most people will have an opportunity to learn from what's already working out there, but you had to start from nothing. Um, and you leveraged at, at the most opportune time, 2021, 2022, now into 2023, reels, video content. That's the majority of the content that you put out. And so you embraced like, I need to do reels. And it sounds to me, and everyone that's in social society knows this is my game. You batched, you batched created content. You had days, not the day where you had a five second clip after six hours, but you had you had blocks of time scheduled in to your life where you sat down, you had an intention, and that was, I'm going to create as much content in this time frame as possible. My guess is, tell me if I'm wrong here, 
you probably knew the videos that you were going to be creating because you yeah. had been studying yes. other videos. So part of your batching content time prior to that is you've got to do research. You've got to see what's working. Everyone that's in social society, I give you that. Every single month at the beginning of the month in an email newsletter, you get eight to 10 audios that are trending right now on Reels and examples of how to use them. Yeah. I'm gonna research for you, <laughs> right? But that's something you did, right? You batched that content. And then the biggest thing was, is you were, you've been consistent. You may not have always posted every day, but you've never, like, you've never quit. Let's say that. You had times where maybe you did more content distribution less based yeah. on the seasons, yeah. right? But you've just kept going. Did I miss anything specific that you feel like has been helpful to your marketing journey with your business? No, I don't think so. I think, I think also when it comes to, to those is it's, there's n like, there's no, like you have to post everything, you know, you have to post like the one that you think, oh, I didn't edit that good enough or something like you can't be so focused on, you can't, you just, you can't, you, you have to post it. Like the one that I, the initial one that went viral, I was literally like, oh, this is silly. Posted it. Yeah. Another one with my big glasses that was like here recently with my, like, they're like bedazzled. Yeah. I was like, another one that I was like, oh, I didn't really edit that good enough. And like afterwards I was like, I should just delete it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't delete it. Don't like let it live its course. Like it, it needs that space in your feed to grow. And it doesn't always, I think because we get so caught up and everything has to be so perfect and everything has to be aligned so correctly. And, you know, I'm not saying be sloppy and just do whatever, but you don't have to be so focused on it being perfect that the way our brains work is even if it's a second off, our brain has already filled in the gaps, mm. <laughs> which is funny, but like you can have a typo, you know, and people, you know, your brain, it just, it's already working in, in overdrive anyway. So you don't have to be so focused on it. And, yeah. and even if that's get you, it's okay to put out what you have. You know, you don't have to do more than that. You can just put out what you have mm. because what you have is going to be enough. Perfect. I love that. Okay. Perfectionism. <gasps> okay. We're going to, we're going to nail it. We're going to drive it home with this perfectionism. <clears throat> so there's a book that one of my mentors nine years ago had me read. It's called the magic of thinking big. Um, I recommend everybody read it. Really the main chapters are two two, 12 and 13, you can get the gist of the book in those three chapters. Um, talks about the three main failure diseases. Okay. Excusitis, making excuses for why you should not do something. Um, procrastination and detailitis, which per perfectionism lives under detailitis. Um, if you are worried about doing things too perfect, or it has to be too this or that, it will not it will not come through the way that it's supposed to, which is with genuine authenticity to who you are. Because if you're trying to be perfect, you're trying to be something that you're not because nobody's perfect. And people will actually appreciate the real. Humanity. Yeah, the real you, your humanity. Um, but that perfectionism or that feeling like you have to have all your ducks in a row before you take an action will be the thing that slows you down and gives doubt too much time to germinate, right? Yeah. Too much time to take root. So um, I love this. Gosh, this is so good. I'm going to have so much fun editing this and then like- A treasure, a treasure trove. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so good. I can't believe it. I'm literally getting like Ed Milet vibes. I don't know if you listen to Ed Milet's podcast at all. Okay, you should, because this is the kind of interview styles he does. I'm like- this is some quality content right here, baby. So, um, okay, guys. So here is how you get your straws because you're going to go get one now. Um, whiskeystraw.com uh, yeah. is the website. And she is currently, can I say this? Can I tell them what you're working on right now? Okay, because you posted about it. Totally. On the internet. Um, oh. She is in the process of making disposable plastic yeah. ones. I'm so excited. 
Oh my god! Like all different kinds and sizes and uh, colors and yeah, all I'm like the process is fun, but it is scary because you know that seed of doubt that said you know you couldn't sell this many. Yep. How are you gonna now? Like your next order is gonna be a, a warehouse, you know, a warehouse, and I'm just trusting. I'm right. just trusting. Have you read the book Inventing Joy? No, I should. I'm like, up, like, I'm like, some of them I know, and some of them I'm like, okay, I need to, I'm going to rewatch my own podcast so I know which books I need to read. Yes. Okay, so there's a movie that Jennifer Lawrence starred in called Joy. So okay. You can watch the movie and read the book or, or vice versa. It's I the woman like the who looks always way better. Oh, oh my gosh, so much better. She is the inventor of the washable mop head. Oh, okay. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. You'll love it. You're going to love it. Okay. I'm on like QVC and like she had to do like the, she, oh, it's so good. So anyways, guys, we are looking, I'm looking at Joy. I'm looking, but you're not Joy, obviously, but that's such a good book. I think you would love that personally, but okay. So whiskeystraw.com is your website. Do you prefer people to shop there or Amazon? Do you care? Um, My website, of course. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter whichever is easiest, obviously, but I have a love hate relationship with Amazon. So with me, (laughs) right. And there's, for those on the replay, you're seeing it across the bottom, but that's W H I S K E E S T R S S S T R S T R A W.com. So whiskey with E E at the end straw.com. And then also at whiskey straw on Instagram. Yes. Um, yes. So gosh, this has been so wonderful. Thank you. You've blessed me. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Yeah, good. I, you know, we started it a little late and then we, and then we went way over. So it's all good. Yes. It's perfect. It's really great. My husband came home in the meantime. So he let the sitter go about 20 minutes ago. So I was thank like, you. I totally forgot he had a sitter. Whoops. <laughs> oh man. He came I knew he was going to be home. Um, so I was just, I texted him while we're on here and I'm like, just let her go. Cause I'm rolling right now. So we're just going to keep going. I'm not going to slow this down. No way, Jose. <laughs> If we ever have co- like, no, not if we ever, when we have coffee in real life, we're going to have to like, it's going to be like a whole morning. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's probably what's more likely to happen is um, I'm going to suggest a Mexican restaurant because I feel like an endless baskets of chips and salsa, as much as I like coffee, um, we have more of a reason to stay there longer. Right. <laughs> if it's chips and salsa. That's just me. I'm, I'm for sure getting queso. Just yeah. Here. <laughs> okay we're doing it i'm so excited okay well thank you again um everyone that's watching if you have questions um for me um or for anessa please drop those in the comments follow share do all the things that you know to do but um otherwise this has been great thank you so much for everything thank you for having